So welcome to our webinar today. My name is Pooja. I will be your presenter. I will be um, showing you about three design, three shaper and deep image. Whenever you have a question, please type in the question area. Please remember everyone is muted. So at any point you can ask a question. If we do not have time to answer your questions, we will contact you after the webinar and do our best to answer them. Okay, so we're just about to begin. So yes, welcome. I hope everyone is able to see my screen and hear me. Okay, so the version I'm going to be showing you is version 11. That is our present version of 3Design. That's our latest version. For those of you who are potentially new to CAD and CAM, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background about what it is. So CAD is Computer Aided Design. That's what it stands for. And it gives you the ability to take anything um, you might have sketched or gives you the ability to sketch on a computer. OK, and this can be either 2D or 3D, depending on how you want to do this. Um, the next step after that is called CAM, which is computer aided manufacturing. And this means it allows you to literally create like 3D prints or use a CNC machine, okay? And it allows you to actually see what the piece will look like in 3D, which is great. Um, so it gives you the ability to look at um, the depth and things like that. So why do people use this technology? Well, it allows you to, it's, it allows for lots, oh, sorry, excuse me, it's a bit of a Monday morning right now. Um, it, it is, it is a very flexible tool to you. So what I mean by that, especially during the pandemic, it allowed you to work from home, it allowed you to work on the train, wherever you needed to be, it allowed you to, to work that way, okay? Um, it gives you the ability to create different types of collections, try them out rather than actually making them physically. You can make it on a computer, try them out, see if they work. Um, and also it, it gets rid of that stock. So your stock is actually on a computer versus literally sitting in your safe. It also allows you to communicate with your clients um, and put things on your websites, on your website. It also allows you, and this is, this is a great thing, especially about 3Design, it will allow you to quickly modify things. So for example, when people have different ring sizes, you can quickly calculate things. We're sitting at the workbench and doing that can be quite, not everything is as easy. For example, if you have an eternity ring to change it from one size to another, isn't always as quick as it seems, but with CAD, it does help. Okay. So who is the company behind 3Design? Well, it's, it's a company called Gravotech. Gravotech is a large group. They're based in France, in Lyon, and um, they have a software division called Type 3, and Type 3 created 3Design, and this was done in 1999, so that was quite a while ago. Um, type 3 has about, well, over 30 years of experience with CAD CAM software. They deal with a range of software, not only for the jewelry industry, but also for signages and for engraving. They have about, uh, Gravitech has about 17 subsidiaries and over 900 employees and a range of dealers and resellers worldwide. I'm Pooja and I am based in the UK and I manage the UK, Ireland and India. We do have other resellers. If, if you are in another country, I can put you in touch with them. So what I'm going to be showing you is 3Design, which is the main software today. Then there's 3Shaper, which is the organic modeling software. And then we have Deep Image, which is the rendering software. So 3Design, which is the main software, as I've mentioned, it's a very visual piece. Of, it's a very visual software. So while you're designing, you will see everything in color. You don't have to try and imagine what it will look like. If it's in white gold, pink gold, it's there or yellow, you know, and the stones are in the color it should be. So what you're seeing in the screenshot is what it will look like. You have your tools. Everything is is quite, um, it is a very user-friendly software. So when it does open up, it does ask you a series of questions. And whenever there's an empty box, it just means it's waiting for an answer from you. 
and we do have a library. Uh, you can, of course, create your own collections, which is what I always suggest to, to people because the point of Cat Software is that you create your own catalog, okay? Because you have your own style. If you want, you can create your own settings, your own bands, anything you want. Just put them into little folders and then whenever you have a client, just show them or just mix and match. And then if you need to put them together, do that at a later stage. After that, we also have 3Shaper, which I said is our organic modeler. And 3Shaper is a plugin, just so you know. Um, what that means, when, when I say modeler, it means, imagine you have a piece of clay in front of you and you can literally mold it into whatever you want. So it works according to, um, you can pull things, you can twist things. It's, it's, it's literally like you have Play-Doh or clay in front of you. Then we have Deep Image, which is our rendering software. And by rendering, I mean it will allow you to create photorealistic images. So you will be entering a new window there. And what that does is it allows you to drag and drop different colors, which is great because, I mean, this ring that you're looking at, if, if the client wants to see it in a range of platinum, yellow gold and pink gold, you can do that through batch rendering. So it gives you the ability to quickly drag, drop, tell the software, these are the three colors and this is the position I want this ring to be positioned in, which is great because then you can put it on your website and all your rings are in a certain position as well, okay? So why would you choose 3Design? 3Design is a parametric software. So what parametric means is, it will save, when you're designing something, the software saves every single step of your design. So at any point you need to go back and make a modification, you can, because it's right there in your software. It's right there in your history tree. So for example, going back to what I said about the eternity ring, if you need to change the ring size, let's just say it's gone from a an M, which is an, an M UK size, or if you're in Europe, it's a 52 or 54, you need to change that ring size to something bigger or something smaller. You can easily do it by going back into the tree, going back to where you put the ring size, change that, and then your entire design should modify quite quickly. Okay, which means also going back to something I said, that it is a very visual software. You don't have to try and imagine what it will look like. And you can actually use this in front of a client even sometimes. So what I would say is create your design first and then you can show it to them so they can actually see what it will look like, you know, from the top view, side view. So it is, you can show it to them three-dimensionally. By the way, there is no other software required to run 3Design. 3Design is its own software. So you are not dependent on any other software there. Okay, you can import and export as in various file types. So 3DM and SDL, and SDL is what you need for 3D printing, by the way. Okay, an OBJ, a step file, those are also certain files sometimes that are used for 3D printing. It is also Mac and PC compatible. Okay, so if you are looking for what type of computer to get, please contact us and we'll let you know whether the computer you have presently is compatible or not, or we can recommend one to you. Okay, so um, if you have any questions and I don't get a chance to actually answer them during the webinar, please contact us at info at 3 designcom Okay, now I'm going to show you the software. Let me just move that aside. Just going to quickly check. There are no questions. I'm just hoping everyone can see my screen, which is brilliant. Okay. So when you open 3Design up, this is your home page. So at the very top, you have your timer, top right-hand corner, and it gives you an idea how long you've been working on a piece. If, for example, you get a phone call or you need to go make yourself a cup of coffee, just click on it, and clicking on it once means it's paused. Of course, you have to remember when you pause it, you have to unpause it as such. So what you have to do is click on it again. Um, if you need to start from the very beginning, let's just say you're making a modification to a file and you need to know how much you're charging for this new modification, you just need to double click on it and it will start from the beginning, okay? Um, so let's go into a new file. Sorry, before I do that, so get a bit excited, sorry here. Um, this is, you've got three icons here. This will open up a new file, okay? So if you're gonna start a new design, this is the, this is the first icon to 
to click on. If you're opening up a previous file, okay, you would go here and, <clears throat> excuse me, these are your norm, normally you will have six little boxes here. And these six boxes are the last files you've actually created, you've used. If there is a three design logo, it just means the location of the file has changed. It doesn't mean anything else. So this is still in my original location, as is this, but this one has changed. Okay. Now, if you were to click on the our new little mascot for 3Design V11, which is the butterfly, it will take you to our welcome page. Okay, so if we were to go there, it takes you to our link, and this will tell you how to um, take you to some tutorials, it will take you to our 3Design forum. Sometimes it does take a little while to load, so while that is loading up, I am going to continue. So I'm going to open up a new file. So go to the very top, go to open. Actually, I could have gone there. Sorry about that. Silly me. So of course, I have all my settings. So here you go. Here's your welcome page. And it will give you an idea of how to set your graphics. Go to the forum, your tutorials. You know, there are little videos here and there. You can see what we always recommend is if you become a client is to immediately join our forum and also to, um, let me just do that. And also to watch, uh, join our YouTube page as well. Okay, to subscribe to it. So let's get into it. This is our, okay, your screen should be divided into three by default. So you will have your tools on the left hand, on the right hand side. Sorry, my left and my right. I'm not very good at knowing that. So on your right hand side are your tools. In the middle is your work area. So you have to think of it as the workbench. And on the left hand side is your history tree. So this is where every single step I've done to create this piece is saved. Okay, I'm going to just hide things, hide things. By hiding, it just means I'm just clearing up the screen so it's nice and clean. Um, Okay, so I've zoomed in. So let's go through some of the tools. So in 3Design, you do have your solid tools and you will have your jewelers bench. Okay, so different things going on there. You will have a title and then you will have your tool underneath it. All your tools will have a name and whenever you hover over it, it will pop up and tell you what it is. Okay, so for example, if you go to a cone, it'll say um, everything there. It loads of empty boxes. It just means, well, firstly, choose your material, choose the location, okay? So where is the center of your piece? What is the diameter of your piece? What is the height of your piece? And if you want to immediately center it, you can center it, okay? So wherever there's empty boxes, always look through the icons and say, okay, well, what is everything asking me, okay? So empty boxes means questions. Okay, and wherever there is a hand or there is an arrow or a plus sign, it just means you can add information. You can give the software the information. Okay, and wherever there is a question mark, so if I click on the question mark, this is your built in um, manual. So it will tell you how to create everything. Okay, well, nearly everything. So it's got little icons. So let's go to mirror. So for example, it will tell you, okay, if you choose mirror, this is what happens. Okay. So everything is built in. Just going to close that off. Um, you can sketch at any point, by the way. So the little pencil with the little curve, that's to allow you to sketch. And when you sketch something, you can, you, you can go on and construct. Construct just means you're going to make it three-dimensional. So you need to give it some sort of height, some sort of weight, some sort of thickness, things like that. So tools you have are extrusion, for example. Um, you have revolve, you have curve sweeping, loft. You can position things, so you can move, rotate, scale. You can put things in the middle as well. Under special effects, the most common tool you're going to use, and it's a very, very big CAD word, it's Boolean operation, okay? So what a Boolean operation means is you can add things together or you can subtract things. And when you add things, it just means like you're, you're soldering things if you were working at the workbench. And if you were subtracting, it just means you're filing or drilling away material, okay? Um, 
then you can always check your part with the part doctor, which I think is always a very handy tool to have. You can duplicate things. So you can clone, you can mirror, you can duplicate, circular duplicate as well. Uh, let's get further down. You can deform things. So you can taper, twist and bend. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can measure things. And this is, this is really handy. So I'm going to show you, for example, if you were to measure and you wanted to know what the measurement is here, you know, you can take the thickness of the walls, for example. Okay. The weight is great because it gives you the weight according to the material. So if it's platinum, let me take a look. I have taken the weight already. Okay, and let me check what was the material of this, white gold, 18 carat, okay? But let's just say, for example, we don't want it to be in white gold, we'd like it to be in platinum. So what you would have to do, ooh, multi-cutters, I have to get rid of that. It's not that. Not that, and not that, okay. So it, and we have to take, I'm going to, oh, so sorry. Where it says material, click on the hand, click on the hand, opens up my material database. And now what I want to do is you can take a look. You've got your precious metals. You've got different alloys of gold, you've got platinum, silver, you've got precious stones, okay, ornamental stones. Swarovski is one of our partners. So we have their database. We have some of their brilliant colors. But of course, we're choosing metal here because it is the ring, the actual ring. So I'm going to go, oh, I want to move this. I'm going to go back to precious metals and I'm going to go to platinum. So double click platinum, changes the platinum, make sure it changes the platinum. Now over here, you can validate, which is the green tick, or you can cancel, which is the cross, or you can preview, which is the eye. Okay. So I'm going to validate. Do you want to retrieve it? I'm going to say no, no. And let's take a look. Okay, and there you go. It is nine point. Ooh. By the way, whenever it does this, it means it's saving in the background. So what's really good about 3Design is it will automatically save for you. You don't have to think about, oh, I've got to save every now and again. No, it will automatically save for you while you're creating a piece. Okay, so where is my finished shank? Okay, wait, I'm actually going to undo because I just realized I've actually gotten rid of something. Anyway, so this is the weight in platinum. Okay, so I'm going to hide that. So those are some of our tools and under support. This is really good if you're if you're new to CAD um, and if you tend to like sketch and everything. We have something called image and plane. Image and plane means it will allow you to import your image. So I'm going to click on it. It will allow you to import your image as a JPEG, a GIF file, or PNG, and it will. Actually, it could be a sketch, it could be a photo someone's given you, just scan it in, import it into your software and you can trace around it. And when I say trace around it, you can actually draw around it, okay, in the sketch module. Okay, then you have the jeweler's bench and in the jeweler's bench, you can create rings in different type, in different ways. So you've got your ring size, you've got signet rings, um, then you've got stones. We've got, so let me just show you. We've got different shapes. These are our standard shapes. If there, is shape, if, if there is a shape we do not have, that's what I meant to say, you can actually go to Custom Stone Builder and on, in Custom Stone Builder, you can create your own shape. And then that will automatically take that shape, take that curve that you've drawn in Sketch and create it into an actual stone. Okay, in jeweling and gemstone setting, different ways of setting. So you've got pave, you've got channel, you've got You've got your um, your claw setting. You've got your bezel setting. Reporting. This is one of my favorite tools. It is actually called technical drawing. Technical drawing allows you to. Let me just show you. So if I actually zoom out, why? Where is it here? It will allow you to create something that looks like you've actually sketched it out, which is great. And then you can, of course, create your own little, you, you can add details to it. So you can keep this for your own records, like it to a client, completely up to you. Okay, so let's get into it. How did I create this ring? I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna hide things. Okay, 
how did I create this ring? Let me go back into very good to do in your history tree is start to label things because the more you label, the quicker it will be for you to find something. Because right now, imagine I've got this tree. Imagine it's really, really long and I don't know where everything is. So if I click on it in the work area, it's highlighted. And in your work, in your history tree, it's also underlined and highlighted. So I know it's my finish shank. How did I create it? Okay, these are the steps. Let's say, okay, we want to change the stone, the center stone. So I'm going to look in my history tree. I have labeled it, which is great. So center stone, I'm going to double click on it. Center stone I had chosen. The color was a citrine. Uh, it was heart shape. And these are the dimensions. Well, we're going to change everything. So let's say under material, click on the hand, which opens up the database like we did earlier. And we are going to change it to, you can change it to a precious stone. You can change to a mental stone. Like I said, completely up to you. I'm going to go the sum, I'm going to go to precious. And I'm going to say, do you know what? I would like just, just I want a diamond. Okay. The shape is going to be, let's say this time, it's going to be doo, 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 an oval. I'm going to look at it. Sorry. So I've got the ring in the box at the bottom left-hand corner. So this is my top view. I, because I clicked on the blue, if I clicked on the green, it's going to be my front or my back view. If I click on the red, it's going to be my left or my right view. If I click on the home button here, It'll put it back into kind of like a perspective view, okay? So at any point, you can look at it from any view you want. So I'm going to click on the blue again because I want to look at the top view. Now I can't actually see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is look in my properties and click on the eye. So remember, you have validate, cancel, and let's preview. So that's going to be what my stone looks like. That is the shape. You can change the dimensions. Don't worry about that. You can change... Now the next, you've got three tabs. So this is the shape, the shape and the size. This is the cut of your stone. So I'm going to look at it from the front view. Pull my piece down. Now I'm going to hide my finished shank. So in my history tree, right click hide because I want to take a look at the stone. This is the importance, okay? So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, okay, so what stone cuts do I have? I have a diamond cut. I have a gem cut. So gem cut just means it's a fatter belly. You've got a princess cut, you've got a cabochon, and you have a briolette. Now a briolette makes no sense for this piece, but if you ever wanna do like drop earrings or something, it's nice to visually show someone that, okay? So I'm gonna go back to that. And now I'm going to just take a look and let's just say the client is happy, that's what she wants, okay? So what you do is you go back and you say validate. It's saving in the background. Let's bring up our piece, show. Your piece has turned red. The piece has turned red because the software is aware you've made a change. Now the change you've made is you've, you've changed the stone from a heart to an oval, okay? Now in order to actually recompute and make this, this new stone fit, you need to go over to your history tree and at the very top you have a red ball with an arrow and that just means you can recompute. So when I click on that, it will recompute and modify your design. Okay, so it will fit according to what it thinks is correct. Let's take a look at the weight now. I want to just double check. Right, I'm going to double check. Yeah, I'd rather just do a new weight actually. Where's my weight? There it is. Okay, so I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to measure, weight, and validate. Okay, now let's imagine your client, I don't even know what ring size it is. So I'm going to take a look in my history tree. We did a size of an L, so a UK L. So you have European size, you have UK, you have American, you have Asian, uh, you have Japanese, and you have customized. So imagine you have an L and a quarter. You can measure it. You can put the actual dimension in there. So let's say now this is going to be a J. Okay. Validate. Now keep in mind, 
the entire design is going to change and the weight is going to modify as well. So recompute. And there you go. So it's a little bit lighter. And yeah, you can you can modify it as much as you want. Okay. Now imagine you want to actually let's do a technical drawing of this. I'm going to hide this by the way. Okay. I'm going to quickly check if there are any questions. No questions so far. I hope this is all making sense. So my favorite tool, absolutely my favorite tool to the jeweler's bench. Select your, your ring. I'm going to go to reporting, technical drawing. It will by default usually put it in the middle and it will do it in wireframe. So you can choose now. We have view, we have what are you putting in there. So I've added my shank. Now I'm going to add my stone. Okay, so now your stone is in there. What is, how are we viewing this, the rendering mode? Is it as a wireframe? Is it as a gray image or as a material? Personally speaking, I quite like the wireframe because it gives you that idea that you can actually just makes it look like it's a drawing. You can actually shade it in as well with a pencil later if you like. So rendering, the 3D rendering setting, I'm going to say simplified and it just gets rid of a few little lines here and there. Okay, that's what I wanted to do in this. Now, this is your objects. You also have your view settings. So with the view settings, it means you can actually move it. So you can actually move it however mil millimeters you want. You can scale it and you can take a look at the orientation. So this is the front view, as I said. I'm now going to add another view. So click under type of object, click on the plus sign, add view. I'm going to move this up. You can do this by eye, so you don't literally have to do this completely up to you what you decide to do. Scale is three. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to change the orientation though. I'm going to say I want it to be my top view. Okay. Brilliant. And now I'm going to add one more view. So add view. And yes, I want it to be the side view. I'm going to click it down. And you see it snaps, which is great because I want that to, to relate to each other. And I'm going to move this actually across and move this slightly across as well. And I'm happy with that. Or you could even say, you know, well, you want it to be here. Maybe move this a bit higher up. Completely up to you, it is your piece. You can you can add as many as you want. You can make one gray, one, one like this, and one completely in color. Everything works. Now, when you're happy with the positioning of it all, what you do is you go to the little printer here in your properties, print. <clears throat> you go to the floppy disk, very, very old school. And you can say ring one, save it as a PDF. If I was to go now to my desktop, go to ring one. There you go. Okay. So saved as that. And yeah, what I would do now is just literally color it in. Just take a pencil and kind of like color it in and make it look like you've actually sketched it out a little bit. So I'm going to validate that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, you can actually add more detailing to it. But before I do the detailing, I want to let you know that if I was to, let me just double actually delete that. It's a previous one, I'll tell you why. Delete it and delete that as well. The reason being, there is a reason I'm doing this. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to go to make this, we want a technical drawing with more details, okay? So at the very bottom, you have your gallery, and in your gallery, you have different chains, different demo pieces, earring hooks, all of that. You have necklace bales as well. You can add to this, as I said. So I have my own little folder called Puja. I have my 2D shapes. I have my earrings. Um, it is 
maybe I do have to like change them around a little bit. Um, I have different logos in there, I have pendants, everything, you can put what you want. Profiles, now this is very handy to have your own little profile so it's a cross section. Okay, I have my own rings, different things going on. Now, I'm gonna go to parametric symbols, technical drawing. I'm gonna go to A4 drag drop and this is where I can put in more details so I can put in the company name I can put in the client's name close this off and I'm going to zoom out and when I zoom out this is the information I'm going to modify let me just zoom out a little bit more double click on it in your history tree when you double click on it the properties are going to open up and now you're going to say what is the language um, I'm going to say US it just means English that's all so CAD file, what is this available as? Now, when you tick, when you tick this, it will, of course, put little crosses in there. It is available as a VTF file. A VTF file is a three design file. That's how it saves, okay? It, you can say it's available as an SDL if you want, completely up to you. Put in your company logo. Now, I do have a logo in there. So I'm gonna go to logo, get rid of the sketch. And there you go, that's my little company logo. Then you can, now when I say logo, you have to have sketched it out. It needs to be a sketch and it needs to be a sketch that you actually can import. Um, so you can save like I've done here. If I go back to symbols, if I go back to logos, oh well, it's, it's under logos, it's over here. And I can't do it because I'm actually working in a piece right now. So you put in, the name of the piece, so let's say it's bezel ring. The name of the client, I'm going to say James K. Um, put in whatever notes you want, so you can say available, and I don't know how to type, available in, let's say half carat, three to three carats, completely up to you, put in whatever information you need to, put in your company um, details, go further down, um, today's date is the 16th, that's correct, 2023, scale is three to one, designer is Puja, okay. And then what you do is you validate, this will change, Go back to your technical drawing that you did, the first one where you have the, where you have this. Now what you're going to do is you are going to type of object, go to the plus sign, add, actually, add. Oh no, it's other object, isn't it? Other object and technical drawing. And there it was. Been a while since I've done this, so you need I need to apologize about that. So type of object, it's a vector. Type of vector, it's that, isn't it? Yes, it's a vector. I would have remembered that. So yes, there you go. And what you can do is go to the printer, save it, and now it's going to be ring two. So if I go to my desktop, I have ring two. And there you go. There is Ring 2 with all its details. Okay. So I'm going to close that off. Close that off. Validate. And I'm going to show you something you can actually do if it is a something you can potentially do. And this was done with Adobe. Doesn't mean you can't do it yourself in some in another software. So you can create a whole little catalog, like an actual book with full reports in it. So here you can put in all your material costs, your stone costs, put in all the details, put in your quotes. If you have different ring sizes, different stone sizes, you can actually color coordinate them as well. And it'll tell you what the size is, what the color is, what the material is, what the actual total weight is, the carat weight. Do a little picture, for example, if you are working with a setter that is not in your not in your company. Do a little gallery, so little renderings of them. 
you can put in dimensions as well. Okay, so that's just to give you an example of what you can do. Going to check if there are any questions. Do, 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 do. No questions. Okay. Like I said, don't hesitate to ask any questions at any point. Okay. So I wanted to show you, we are on version 11. So I'm going to show you one of the new tools that we have. It is called Bass Relief, and it is a, an actual tool in 3Shaper, okay? So for example, let's imagine you wanna make, you've drawn this out. So you've drawn this out in Sketch. So I'm gonna double click, and it'll take me into Sketch. So when you're in Sketch, your grid lines will pop up, and that's how you know you are in Sketch, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, this is what's been sketched out. You want to make this into something quite nice. Oh, my voice has gone funny. Give me a sec. <coughs> Sorry about that. So you want to sketch this out. I mean, you have sketched this out and you want to make it into looking something quite nice as a scroll. Okay. So if I go into 3Shaper, 3Shaper is underneath my sketch module. And it may immediately takes me into Bass Relief. Now, with Bass Relief, you can do the top and you can do the bottom. So it means it can actually be an open thing if you want. It can be just the top has been nicely done. So let me give you an example. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to say it's going to extrude. Extrude just means it's going to go upwards one millimeter and it's going to be flat. Okay, so I'm going to preview it. Okay, and you take a look and you're like, hmm, it's 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 upside down because if this is my top view, if I'm looking at my ring in my ring in the box, it's upside down. Okay, so quick way to change it. I'm gonna go back into sketch. And because I've been using count for quite a while, I know that because it's upside down, it just means the orientation of the actual direction of my curve is the wrong way around. So under modify, I'm going to select this curve by the way, go to my tools under modify, I have do, 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 reverse direction. I've done that, I'm going to exit. Now I'm going to go back to Shaper. Go back to the top, preview, and there you go, it's on the top now, okay? And it says this, it's actually flat. And as you can see, if I look at it, it is flat, okay? We can change that. The mode is constant. Let's see what it looks like, preview, okay? It's quite nice because it gives it a little bit more height. You can change it to varying. Let's preview that. Okay, so as you can see, some points are slightly higher than the other. And how it's how it's calculated out is it depends on the width here. Okay, so if it's quite broad in certain areas, it will make it, so it's kind of like a compression. If something is broad, it will make it broad, it'll make it higher because it's broader. Okay, and you can do varying with compression. So let's take a look. Okay, you can do the same with the bottom part so you can decide whether you want to make the bottom part also the same you can make it symmetrical so preview okay so it'll be a solid scroll you can have here or you can say none which means it's going to be open you can make it flat or you can say custom and you can do what you want you can say yes you want it to be flat at the bottom okay so that's one thing you can do it's very quick to do, and it gives you quite a nice little effect going on here. Now, if you're wondering, there is shadow, by the way, so we have reflection within our software. If you want to get rid of that, what you can do is right-click. Let's, oh, I need to exit sketch. I need to exit. You can right-click, topology, and you can do, you can say you don't want to see that anymore. And 
there you go. So you will no longer see the actual reflection, okay? I actually quite like the reflection. So yeah, you can switch it on and off as you please. So the reason I've shown you this, because it can be quite interesting, what you can also do is, I'm just gonna bring out previous piece so you can actually play around and you can make different things, you know, so different heights and you can make it seem, you can make it different, well, quite nice, different heights. And it's actually really nice, especially if you've got different heights going on, for example, um, with, with the flower and everything here. Okay, I think it works really well with the scroll, especially. Okay, then what I'm going to do is, so that is three shaper, I'm looking at the time. I'm going to show you. Um, yeah, let me show you an eternity ring. So I'm going to do something from scratch. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, I could be here showing you everything the whole day, but um, unfortunately we don't have that much time. So after this, after this demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually make something look quite photo-like using deep image. And then of course, at any point you have questions, please feel free to ask. Don't hesitate. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make something like this. Okay, which if you were doing it at the workbench to give someone a quote going from one size to another is quite a pain to do. So I'm gonna hide everything. I'm gonna show you how I would make it from scratch, okay? So if you are going to start with, with sketching, what, I, what we always recommend is look in the view that you're going to be sketching in. So in, as you would, so if you're making a ring, you would usually start through the fingers. So that's the front view. So take a look at your ring in the box and make sure this is the view you have. Select the plane. So you have three planes, okay? You have your front plane, your side plane, and your top and bottom plane. So that's my top plane. That's my side. So it's the plane that is facing you. So I need my front plane. Go to sketch. We're going to start with the finger size because that's how you would do it if someone walked into the shop or someone placed an order. You always need to know the finger size, of course. So under draw, we have basic ring. I'm going to say it is a UKM and validate. That's all you need to do is the first thing is to add the finger size. Now what you need to do is we need to create a profile. So we need to know how thick is this ring going to be? How high is the ring going to be? Okay, so under draw, I'm gonna go to rectangle. I'm gonna randomly draw a rectangle. At any point, you can change this, so don't worry about it. So I'm going to say this is going to be a, so let's just say, for example, I'm going to do, I'm gonna put stones in that are two by three, okay? So, or two by two, let's just say two by two. So I'm gonna make it 2.8 wide, height, I'm going to say it's going to be 2.2, okay? In my history tree, I'm going to go over to rectangle. I'm going to go over to rectangle one, right click, rename, and I'm going to say profile, okay? And exit my sketch. Now, as you can see, your sketch is building up. It's saying, okay, what have you got? You've got your finger size, your history trees building up your finger size and your profile. I'm going to go to the jeweler, um, solid module under construct curve sweeping. Okay. Curve sweeping. You have three things to do. First thing, uh, three tabs. So you've got your path, your section and the orientation of your section. First thing to do is decide what is the material we're going to make this in. I'm going to change it to yellow gold. So click on the hand. Go to precious metals, 18 karat, yellow gold. Perfect. Your path, normally your path is always going to be your finger size. So click on the hand, click on your finger size, and make sure that the arrow is going around it. Perfect. Next tab, your section. So we're going to say, okay, well, what, what section are we making this? And when I say section or profile, it means you also need to think of, um, is it going to be... Um, 
comfort fit? Is it going to be a D shape? Things like that. Those are questions you need to, that, that will be the deciding factor on the shape of this. So I'm going to add, so empty box, add your section. Okay, now I can see that the section is cutting into my finger size. It'll make this, the ring far too small. So I need to go to the third tab, which is the orientation. And under the orientation, now you have to decide whether you need to change the alignment to vertical or horizontal. You can't go to wrong. You can click on each thing and you will visually immediately see. Now I've changed it to top, the vertical to top, and it's changed it and moved it up. Perfect. I'm going to look at it from the side view. Okay, it does look like it's broader than it is higher. Perfect, that's what I want. And I'm going to validate. Okay, so I'm gonna look at it. Yep, that looks like what I want. If I look in my history tree, I've already got curve sweep. I'm gonna rename that, I'm gonna say band. How did I create this band? I created this band and this is what's really good. It will tell you how you've created it. So you've created the band using the ring, meaning the ring size, which is in your sketch and your profile. And by the way, if at any point you do run into issues with a file or you get stuck, always email your design file, your VTF to us. And because we can read your history tree, we'll be able to tell you where something's gone wrong or what won't work. Okay, now, We've already built links up, which is brilliant. I'm going to go back into my sketch because now I need to tell the software, okay, I want to add, I want to add stones and I want to add stones throughout this piece. Okay. So I'm going to go under draw. I'm going to go to circle. And I'm going to draw quite a large circle. Okay. And I'm going to say this circle rename is path to project. So what I'm doing here is I am trying to, I'm going to link this to this. So what I'm going to be doing is imagine you're taking a marker pen and this is exactly what I'm going to do. You've got a plain band and you're taking a marker pen and you're putting it all around your ring. And this is exactly what I'm going to do by snapping this to this. It's like, it's like taking a marker pen and just telling the software, I want stones running all the way here. So under curves, cylindrical projection. You've got two empty boxes. It says, what is your curve to project? Well, click on the plus sign. It is this large curve I just created, path to project. It is selected and you can see the little red arrow, perfect. Next thing, what is the empty box? Support object. Click on the hand, support object is the band, okay? always preview, so you've got the eye, and you can see it's going all the way around. Perfect, and validate, okay? So now we are ready to go, and if I take a look in my, oh, I'll take a look in the history tree in a little bit, actually. So now I need to go over to the jeweler's bench. In the jeweler's bench, I've got jeweling. Under jeweling, I have, I'm gonna do baguettes this one time. Baguettes, it's asking you, do you have a curve? You've got a bunch of things going on here, so you have to add your curve, the layout of your stones, your stones, a top channel and a bottom channel. Yes, I have a curve, which is this one that I've snapped. As you can see, it's gone very dark blue. I'm going to click on my ring and freeze it. Freezing means you can look through it. And you can see stones are placed all the way around by default, by the way. Okay. And let's take a look at our layout. So it is putting in stones that are two by 1.5, 1.48 actually. It has put in 43 stones and no, no space between. Well, we're gonna say we're gonna change things. So we're gonna say variable. We want stones to be two by two, which it's done, and it's put in 32. We're going to say there's a little bit of spacing because if you know, you were never going to get baguettes all the same size, exactly the same size. So I'm going to say 0 0.03, just a little bit, tad bit of spacing between, or let's say five to be sure. Okay. Now what we can do is, 
So you see it's left a little bit of spacing. Let me just show you. Sorry, I should show you. Yeah, so zero. I think it's just fit in as many as I can, which is that. Okay, 32. So I'm going to go to stones, choose your material. I'm going to keep it as a diamond. You can choose the cut of your stone. So I'm going to say it's a princess cut this one time. Okay. Then we're going to create our top channel. Tick the box top channel. I'm going to make it quite a bit longer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to say it is. So it's taken the width of your stone exactly. You can make it slightly smaller so you can bring it in a bit. So you know your setter has space to create that. You can create it with an actual little thing, little slot. Or you can say nothing and it can just be straight, completely up to you. Now that's yellow gold. I want to change that to white gold. Then we have our bottom cutter. So I'm going to go outside, create our top cutter underneath the stones. Yeah, that looks about right. I might make it a little bit longer. And what I might do is I might actually make this a little bit more spacing. Okay, so you can make it a bit smaller. Okay. And validate. Okay, so let's take a look. What do we have? We have three elements immediately created from this one tool. Elements one, if you click on it, right click, and I would always say, because it's quite confusing, rename and say what it is. So that is my top cutter, because that's blue. Element two, right click, rename, it's my bottom cutter. And then element three, which we cannot see, but if you hide everything, it is your stones. Okay. So show and hide. Okay. What I'm going to do is now, oh, where's my actual band? Here it is. So we have everything to begin to actually make, to remove. So we're going to go to the solid module. We're going to go into special effects, subtract. So Boolean operation, and we're going to subtract. When you do a subtraction, everything you're going to, what you're going to keep should be the first object going in. So I'm going to keep my band. I'm going to remove the top cutter. I'm going to remove the bottom cutter. The operation is not add, it is subtract. And I'm going to validate. And there you go. We hide that. Okay. So as you can see, that is what it will look like. Let's get an idea of the weight. Okay. And where are our stones? Okay. So this was, if I remember correctly, it is a size M. So 2.7, give or take, that's not bad. It was a size M, if I remember, and it was 32 stones, two by two. Let me just double check everything. So all the information is still in there, by the way. So double click on baguettes. Um, go back to layout, 32, two by two, perfect. And the ring size. Was an M, perfect, okay. Now, loads of things we can do now. We can decide, we can take this ring and we can make it into a half, a half ET. We can change the ring size. We can change the number of stones. We can do many, many things and everything will happen quite quickly. So let's just say, for example, first thing we're gonna do is change the ring size. So from an M, we are going to change it into a R. Validate. Now recompute. There we go. I'm going to go back and I'm going to see how many stones do we now have. So go back into your history tree to baguettes two. Because it's an R, we now have 35 stones, okay? Remember, two by two still. You can change that at any point as well. Also, what I'm gonna do is 
we're going to say this R is now going to be a half, half ET ring. So what I'm going to do is draw. I'm going to take a symmetrical curve. I'm going to open it up and literally create half a curve. <clears throat> and validate. And now what I'm going to say is half curve. And if I was to look in my history tree, ET ring, I have my band and I removed my top cutter and my bottom cutter. Okay, and my band was created with a ring size and a profile. Everything is linked and this is very, very important. Now to change it from a full ET to a half ET, I'm going to go into my history tree and where I did my cylindrical projection. Okay, double click that. So remember I snapped my full circle around the ring. I'm going to change it to half, delete the previous one, preview, make sure it is halfway. Yep, that looks right. Validate, recompute, and there you go. Okay, so you can easily just tell the client, you know how much it's gonna cost them now, you know how much it's gonna weigh, and you know how many stones are going to be in there. So let's double check how many stones are in a half. It is 18. Okay, so it says number of baguettes, 18. Going to check, are there any questions? Nope, doesn't seem like it. Okay, brilliant. So last thing I'm going to do is, please, like I said, don't worry, I could be here all day showing you loads of things. So if you do want to ask any questions, feel free to ask. Um, Let's go to making a no. Really, no questions. Okay. So we are going to make this into an actual photo like image. Brilliant. Okay. So I am selecting my ring my stones, everything you want to put into this photo like render, you need to select everything and take it into deep image. Do you want to group all the objects? In this case, I'm going to say yes, because I want the stones to be all the same color. But if you say no, then the color, the stones will be different colors. You, uh, you can choose different colors. So while that is loading up, oh, which it's loaded up quite quickly, So when you actually import something into Deep Image, everything is, is a gray window. So you have no colors. You can just add colors from your materials. Um, so that's the first thing you do. Then you have environments. So you can choose whether you want a glossy background, you want a white glossy background, you want something else going on, you know, completely up to you. You can make your own background as well. You can use a scene prop. So you can put the ring in a box. You can put a wine glass in there as well. You can make animations. So what that means is you can make little mini videos. You can turn them around. And under snapshots, this is what I've done for actual, um, for, for, for example, for a website, you can actually position things in a certain angle and it will save your angles, which is really, really handy. So let's go to materials first. And I'm going to go to my folder, Puja. I'm going to go to gold. I'm going to go to sharp. So we have different things going on. And I'm going to say, do you know what? I want this one. Rag drop. I'm going to make it yellow gold. Okay. And then I'm going to go to stones. And I'm going to say, I would like it to be, let's choose a green. Drag drop onto your stones. OK, so keep in mind, this is just a preview. You can choose your resolution. I'm not doing the best resolution. So under default, it's chosen 800 by 374. You can choose your own resolution. You can make it compatible with an iPhone, an iPod, an iPad. Um, you have different. So we use this also for our, I mean, I use this especially for um, posters and things like that. So you can use whatever size you want, customize it. There is no limit here. So I'm just going to keep it by default, just speed it up. You can change the resolution so you can make it better depth of field. You can do what you want here. Um, 
I'm going to choose my environments and I'm going to say I would like it to be a white background, drag drop. Okay, keep in mind, not best resolution, but I'm just going to show you, just to show you, render. Let's see what it looks like. So it's done it quite quickly. Okay. And you can save it. You can save it as different formats. So JPEG, um, a Photoshop file if you want, PNG, of course. There you go. You can change it. And then what you can do is, of course, drag drop. You, you don't want this color anymore. You can change it to a different color. Going to see pink gold, for example, or platinum, for example. It's a platinum polished. You can give it different, different shapes and different things going on. So I'm going to show you what it would look like if it was a finished file, for example. Oh, sorry, we do have one here. So different ways of showing. So you can see it's quite clear. We have different diamonds, diamond colors. So you can make it so it's slightly, we have a slightly blue color, slightly white, slightly brown, completely up to you. We have different things going on here different backgrounds, as I said. You can put the ring in a box. You can also make a video, so let's go back. So here you go, that's quite nice. You can make a video. So if I was to go to animations and if I was to go to model view, you can drag drop. So let's just say, for example, you want it on a turntable, drag drop, wait for it to load. and you can play. So the video is going to be four seconds long. Just a sec. Well, while that is loading, let me show you what it could look like. Sorry about that. So let's go to, so you drag drop, you put your materials in there. choose the type of movement you want. That's the word I was looking for, movement. And then you render it. Depends on your resolution, depends how complicated your piece is to render as well, but this could be one of your finished items and you can send it to a client, you can put it on your website, completely up to you. So let's take a look. Yeah, okay, so we can play it now. So for four seconds, it will just spin round, of course. If you want it to be slower, you just go into seconds here and you can say you actually want it to be 10 seconds. Let's play it. And for 10 seconds, it'll go around. Of course, it's a loop. Okay. 
going to check are there any questions otherwise we are oops where is my question page no okay well i hope well, we're going to end it here i hope i hope this has all given everyone a hold on i thought there was a question there no, there wasn't. I hope this has given everyone a good idea of how 3Design works, 3Shaper um, capabilities, and DeepImage. If you have any questions um, at any point, of course, feel free. I'm going to try and find this. Feel free to email us at info at 3Design.com. Otherwise, your local representative will get in touch with you after the webinar. And yes, whenever you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Okay? Thank you very much. Have a lovely day, afternoon, evening, wherever you're located. And thank you again for joining us. Take care. Bye.